All right, hey guys, welcome back. So for this video, I plan to make some mounting brackets for this TV. I'm gonna be using some, some mild steel and uh, I've already have it programmed in, in Fusion 360 right here. Instead of having this laptop sitting on the Logan lathe, I've kind of made a semi-permanent uh, work area here on this little bar top here. It, it is next to a little uh, grinding and polishing center for, for knives, which I don't do a lot of. So in the event that I am going to be working on sharpening knives or chisels or, or whatnot, uh, I can easily just move to the laptop. It's a laptop, right? Portable. So here's the, the old TV that I'm going to be using as a monitor. And the reason I, I, I like a second monitor, uh, I think I've, I've really enjoyed being able to use this laptop to give you kind of a uh, in-person screenshot or window into the programming I've done, the CAD, and then the tool paths in the CAM for the mill. I'm not a big fan of doing a big screenshot in the office. I'd rather just get it all done out here. So I'm gonna make this out of this, and I'm gonna stick it here using the French cleat system. So let's get to it. Here is the bracket that I have designed. The stock is about, is 133.5 millimeters in width or in length, I guess you could say here, cause that's the long and 30.5 millimeters in depth. And then the height of about 10 millimeters, 9.5 millimeters. This is a through hole. And then I've got this slot here and so this will do two things. This will give me some flexibility. I can mount the top screw here and then I can be off a little bit and put the screw in where, where I need to down here. But it also in turn will fit the other TV that I have down in, in the house in case I want to bring that out here and use that instead of this. I bought this, <laughs> this is only 720, right? 720p. I bought this in 2005 when I was living in Monterey, California, I bought this for a computer. And back then, you know, it was a shit. <laughs> it was, it was a really sweet uh, plasma TV, totally low tech, but you know, we'll, we'll see if it'll work out here in the shop. If not, I've got a 1080 in the house I can bring out, but I think it'll work for this purpose. So this is what it looks like. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm not going to face it. In fact, I'm kind of going for a, a little steampunk look. I really like that. What I am going to do is do a 2D adaptive, okay, to take off these corners, round it up, all right? And this should be about five or six millimeters depth of cut. And then I, I'll, I'll follow up with a contour. I'm gonna leave a little bit on the walls and then come and clean it up with a contour. Then I'm going to come in with an adaptive, you know, I did, ad I tried adaptive and slot and whatnot, uh, to, to clean this, this part out and adaptive seemed to be the easiest. Probably the easiest would be, would be to come in here with a eight millimeter drill, drill these and then slot the rest, the quickest anyway, but this will work. And then I'm going to, I'll finish that up with a contour. Again, that's eight millimeters. I'll come in and spot these three holes and drill them all with the same drill in preparation for an eight millimeter tap. I'll do a chamfer on everything and then tap these two holes. These two holes, you know, from the backside will drill into that French cleat. Let's flip this to this side. And we've got a 2D adaptive to finish up that contour, followed by the contour to get to my final depth, followed by a chamfer. So pretty simple bracket, pretty simple tool, tool paths. Let's go see it in action. All right, guys, it finally happened. I made a mistake. Either my tool offset is wrong or my probing is wrong or my programming is wrong because I just kissed this vise. Crap. Well, like I often do, I decided to run one of the parts first, you know, just to get all the wrinkles out, make sure it works well, so you get a good video. 
and uh, there were wrinkles. So it turns out that I made a mistake when I was programming in, in Fusion 360. When I, I selected the top contour, and then there's a section where you say, you know, depth, how far do I want to go? I fat fingered it and I went too far, about looks like two millimeters too far. Now there isn't a lot of clearance. I only gave myself about a half a millimeter or a millimeter of clearance. But I, you know, I made contact. But that's okay. You know what? It happens. I'm okay. The style's okay. I've broken many end mills in my life and I have milled into many vices. It happens. It's no big deal. So this video, I'm going to detour a little bit here and I'm going to talk about how I'm not going to make that mistake again. Let's take a minute and talk about how you can run an untested program and make sure that you're not going to collide with your vice. All right, so let's start over. Like I said before, there, there are only a few things that could be wrong. We want to probe it and then we'll check to see if our length offset is right. And then we'll go on to the next step to prove out a, a program that you've never run before. So let's probe this. So now that we've got this probed, I'm going to I'm going to change to my end mill that I collided with this vise or milled into this vise with. Now the important thing here is to this is for me this is tool four and this is edge four. I'm sorry, this is tool four and this is edge three. So in my Siemens controller, I want to just make sure that I have edge three pulled up. And that'll enable the offset that I have stored on this machine. All right, now let's go ahead and jog over to this, to the top of the, of the part that I wanna mill. And then I'll show you with the screen what I'm gonna do here. Okay, that's good for now. I've got this end mill to the side, moving in Z to the side and just above the top of this part. Now I'm gonna switch over to my offset screen and we'll move it to the zero. And the reason I have it to the side is as I move this to zero, right? In my work co coordinate system, you know, I don't want it to collide with the top. If there's an error, like there was before, I don't want it to collide. So let's go ahead and look at that offset screen, set it to zero, and then see how it compares here in the machine. Once again, we've got tool four with, the th with edge three. That's my end mill I'm working with. And then in my offsets, I've got a G54 here, and then distance to go and Z about seven millimeters. So as I lower this down to zero, lower it all the way down, and then I'll go back into the machine and check to see if it, this should line up with the, the top of the part I want to mill. This is very similar, by the way, if, if you've ever worked in a CNC lathe and you're setting your work offsets manually. This is a very similar process. Of course, on the lathe, I would go into my MDI or here MDA and, and do a, uh, a zero maneuver and let it do this automatically but this is easy enough okay I'm almost there switch down to my oops switch down to micron mode and zero let's look in the machine and see how that turned out that looks pretty good and I knew it would because I knew I, I made the mistake in my cam Yeah, right at zero. So now that we've determined 
that the length offset's correct according to the top of the surface that we've probed. I'm gonna run the program again, but, but this time I'm not gonna be complacent. If I'm confident with the program, I'll sit here with my, you know, I'll sit here like this, ready to stop the program with, with this red stop button. Sometimes I'll even cycle through, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. But if I'm really stressing, right, if the pucker factors through the roof, which it will be this time for me, since I know it's gonna go into the vise, or it did last time, I will lower this feed rate knob, right? Once I make that tool change to my 3 8 end mill, I'll lower this feed rate knob down to zero, and I'll control how fast that end mill is descending towards my vise, okay? And if it doesn't look good, if I feel like I'm really close, I'll throw this to zero, hit stop, and then end the program. And a lot of times in, in situations like this, when you're really stressed, maybe it's not your machine, I'm running to either side of the machine and looking from another perspective or getting down and looking here because you don't want to crash. You don't want, definitely don't want to cra crash hard. So that's what I'm going to do here. We'll put the camera on. I've, I've gone ahead and, uh, and re reposted that NC code for, for that depth. So we'll slowly get, get down towards that vise and then I'm just going to stop the program and then we'll go from there. All right, I've stopped it. I'm going to turn this feed rate down to zero and I'm going to go ahead and start it again. I'm going to slowly, I just turned that up one click, okay? I could stop it here if I wanted or start it again. Let's see. You can't see me, but I'm actually over here on the on the left window. Looks like I am going to clear the part. Okay, now it's moving sideways. So I know that I'm not going to collide with the vise and that I can mill this profile. So there I am. I'm not going to collide with the, the vise jaw. It's starting to move left. So I know for at least this op, I'm good to go. All right, now I know that I have a good start to this project. However, before I, before I, I let this program rip, I'm going to get back into 360 and go over all of my cam with a fine tooth comb and make sure that I don't have any other uh, incorrect errors. You know, it's easy on a 10 key. Maybe you, you're, you think you're hitting three and you actually hit eight. I don't know what happened, uh, but it happened. Once that's done, Next week, uh, I'll put out this video and we'll hang up this, uh, we'll hang up this TV in the shop. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.